It's wonderful, actually, because I think uh, this has been a group effort throughout for almost 20 years now at the NCBI. With the senior staff have been together for almost that time. And I think we've been very lucky to be together to manage the whole program, and including GenBank. And I think um, the praise that's been coming along can be distributed across all the people who've been involved in the project at several levels over many years. So going back to the early days when Jen Mank came to the NCBI, right through till now, there's been different involvements and all the people need to get the credit. And I think we should all be proud of what we've done. It's been great and it's been wonderful working here. It's, it's a worldwide project. It's um, not only the three databases who run the, ac uh, the acceptance of the data submissions, but everybody who've submitted sequences to the databases over the years uh, have done it with a lot of collegiality um, and paying attention to detail and basically getting things as right as possible. Um, the interesting part about the collaboration of the three databases is the fact that actually there's in, there is no document describing the collaboration. It's all people into uh, no agreement signed. There's it's only a collaboration in the true sense of the word. We work together, we get things done, we meet, we discuss, and uh, make uh, arrangements in the databases of whichever one is there according to an agreed upon format. So, and it's been working very well. You know, sometimes people disagree, but it gets sorted out, and, and I think it's a very good collaboration. Yeah, I think the driving force here has been the fact that everybody has always wanted their sequences to be in the database and accessible to everybody as soon as possible. There's always been this notion that we'll hold sequences until they were published, which is fine, but once people, sequences were published, they went into the database and, and both authors and the database were proud of the fact that their sequences were up there as soon as they were published. And I think everybody has is on the same page as is the, the open access of this database from the get-go. And this was described in many of the memos early on of how this should be as, a, as part of a, um, an available source of data, not something that you hide away. All predictions were discounted. I think uh, everybody who said it would be 10 times bigger in five years' time, it was, they were sort of wrong. Uh, largely, and, and there were several graphs that proved that yesterday to show that indeed uh, predictions are predictions and w w we should always double our predictions in, with GenBank because they're always, or more than double them, because they're always more than, than there. And I think now is an opportune time. We're going to have a huge explosion of, of data and probably our predictions for the future are going to be off again. Um, well, this, this soon we'll have a sequence a day, a human genome sequence a day. There's, there's a, a competition out there to do that, and I think uh, that'll be proven to, to work. So we'll uh, see how that goes, but uh, pay close attention. I think, I think the public who does interact with GenBank um, is surprisingly knowledgeable. Um, uh, in, and going back from kids in high school doing projects through to uh, people who are interested in a specific disease. They, they teach themselves because of the availability of the data, what they need to know and where they need to go. And I think GenBank helps them to get to that point. And uh, I think that the, the other part of the, your question was, uh, yes, we need to maintain that relationship with everybody out there in the public because, um, and make it user friendly. We need to keep it going that way. And I think we're getting better at it. Um, I think we, it's been somewhat difficult, but there are ways we, we, which we're working on to improve the display, um, how, um, what added information you get with any particular sequence, how it connects to disease, and, and so on. It's very important that all these connections are made, um, and, any, and you can easily see it. It seems seamless to you, to a degree. I think you're right, um, but the way the uh, development works actually is that um, new things are moved in slowly, but then they can be applied across a variety of databases. 
So uh, although the, the money that we do need to do that is, is important to incrementally move up, small amounts can be used across many databases to improve them. But yes, we do need to get uh, added funds, if you, if you could put it that way. <laughs> the way we chose the speakers, I think, is quite important to realize that all the speakers were chosen based on their involvement with GenBank, either in the distant past with historians and um, uh, people like Rich Roberts who were involved in the very early days of creation of GenBank, or people in the middle part like Francis Collins and Craig Venter who were involved in submissions and, and a variety of other things, um, to the people of the future like Elizabeth Nabel and, and David Relman who are depositing modern types of data or new types of data into the databases here at the NCBI. Um, and we were very careful in the way we chose our speakers.